When we look at the lives of the Team Rocket trio, we see this. Failed dreams, broken hearts, abandonment, loneliness, and yet, we also see a solid family unit, good feel fun times, and a hopeful future. The tragedy of Team Rocket is a tale of four broken rogues who came together to form something greater than the sum of its parts. Something that is very much worth talking about. So, let's talk about it. Hey everyone, it's Charles. How are you today? The Team Rocket of the games and the manga are an evil organization with an evil boss worth hating, but in the Pokemon anime, Team Rocket means so much more. Of course, I am talking about the Team Rocket trio. People love them, people hate them, but perhaps there are few who truly understand them. And thus, today our goal is to delve into each of their tragic backstories and unearth their true essence. And the true meaning of their characters as something that can inspire all of us to soar higher and to soar happier. And as always, it is going to be a fun time, so kindly shed a sweet tear onto that like button for the YouTube algorithm to turn it blue. And let's jump right in. Well, Actually, before we jump right in, I have two juicy nuggets to talk about. And you have a chance to win something really awesome, so please do stick around for this bit. Firstly, thank you to Disney Emoji Blitz for sponsoring this video. You can go ahead and download the game for free by clicking the link in the description below on your mobile device or tablet. Secondly, I am also hosting my own sweepstakes, wherein I will be giving away a copy of Pokemon Legends Arceus to three random people, so stay tuned on how to win. Now, I actually love Disney Emoji Blitz. Why? you ask? Because Disney Emoji Blitz is unlike any other match 3 game on the market. For instance, every single emoji has its own unique power-up and you control when and how to use those power-ups, adding a layer of strategy and fun times to every game. My favorite emoji is none other than Pooh Bear. Because I love Pooh Bear. If you love collecting things, which I suspect that you do, then you will have a good old time with the game's rich collection of Disney, Pixar, and Star Wars IP, to which new characters are regularly added. I also wanted to mention that thanks to the game's keyboard integration, you can actually use the emojis you earn in the game when you text your friends outside of the game to flex on them. Full transparency here, if you use my creator's link to download the game and you love it and you decide to spend a little extra to unlock some really fun juicy content, then a portion of that will go towards supporting the Chadu Chadu research team so that we can keep making deeply researched videos and cracking the dad joke. As someone who has played tons and tons and tons of match 3 games, this is honestly actually really good, so I do encourage you to give it a go. And just as a fun extra challenge, if at least 200 people download the game, then I will do another 3-4 to four hour live stream walking around Japan and it'll be a fun time. Secondly, the sweepstakes. How can you win a copy of Pokemon Legends Arceus courtesy of the Chadu Chadu team? Or if you do not have a Nintendo Switch but still want to enter, then in that case, a video on the channel dedicated to you on a topic of your choosing. 1. Use my link in the description to download Disney Emoji Blitz. 2. Get to level 10 in the game. 3. Screenshot yourself at level 10 or above. And 4. Send your screenshot to me on Twitter at Charu Charu. The contest will be open until January 26, 2022 at 11.59 p.m. Japanese Standard Time. And I'll be announcing the winners on Twitter on January 27th and winners just need to DM me to claim their reward. And as a little extra bonus, if we hit 300 downloads, then I will throw in an extra copy of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Because why not? And with that said, thank you again to Disney Emoji Blitz for sponsoring this video. Download the game from my creator's link below. Good luck to everyone in the sweepstakes. And now it is back to the show. 
The Team Rocket trio was the brainchild of the late Takeshi Shudo, who did the series composition in the early years of the Pokemon anime. As he stated in a blog entry years ago, Team Rocket were intended to represent a child's perception of the blundering adults of the world who constantly get in their way. Shudo created their character dynamics, their motto, their peculiar fixation on Ash's Pikachu, and in a sense, regarded them as the main characters of the Pokemon anime. And in their backstories, we can feel Shudo's desire to push for dark more complex themes in the show and the point is that the Team Rocket trio are deeply flawed, sometimes annoying, but at the same time quite likable because whether or not we want to admit it, they are perhaps quite relatable to most of us in many ways. Probably more so than simple and clean protagonists of the anime, characters like Ash Ketchum or Charles Good show, who establish an ideal to strive for but are not representative of the average person. So let's quickly break down the tragic backstories of each of these characters before we piece everything together into the big takeaways. Jessie's story is about a good girl who wanted to make something out of herself but to whom life dealt a bad hand that she never had the ability to work herself out of. Firstly, she was born into a rough childhood, with no father figure in the picture and a mother who embarked on a quest to find Mew and never, ever return. In Snow Way Out, we see Jessie, at that point assumed to be in her 20s, reflecting on how overjoyed she was to see the sight of snow in her childhood. Because in a household with very little to eat, she could eat as much snow as she wanted. In that memory, not taking even the smallest things for granted, she says to herself, I wonder if I will ever be punished for indulging myself like this. I am afraid to say that she would be punished. No, this is not about the belly button tickles, that is just very awkward. Instead, it is about Jessie having big ambitions, but her ambitions crumbling into little more than broken dreams and broken romance. The fall into falls began in what we assume to be Jessie's teens, when she refused an offer to leave town with her teenage love interest in order to focus on becoming an idol with her friends. Unfortunately, Jessie was the only one of her friends who did not make the cut. Regardless, she rose out of a crushing failure and a missed chance at genuine romance to set her mind on a new dream, to become a Pokemon nurse. However, her school grades were so poor that she was only able to enroll at a nursing school intended for chances. And although she had a knack for taking care of others, she did not unfortunately have the abilities to keep pace with the chances. And thus, on graduation day, she found herself mired in failure all alone yet again, as the only person or thing in class who failed to receive a diploma. And from there on, the trail of broken dreams and unfulfilled desires would continue for years and years to come, warping her into an insecure, vain woman who puts up a facade of confidence that even the lightest of Jamie Vendera screeches could shatter into oblivion. But along the way, in the midst of the struggles and the failures, she met one man who would support her through thick and thin. James. When Jesse met James, they flopped their way out of Pokemon tech harder than this man jumping into a swimming pool like an idiot. But together, they went on to work their way up the ranks of a bike gang and later joined Team Rocket where they made another invaluable friend. The two have failed, failed, and failed again together, but they have also taken care of each other through it all. And whether you view their relationship as an obvious romance waiting to blossom or the purest of platonic friendships, it is clear that their bond are unshakable. But what about James? James comes from an entirely different cut of the social stratum. Unlike Jesse, he was born into wealth and while you may be tempted to think that eating from the silver spoon is the fast ticket to happiness, well, money can be a prison as much as a privilege. At the estate, James was little more than a marionette on the strings held by his overbearing parents, who forced his participation in an endless series of penguin acts while forcing him towards a marriage with a woman who most would find fairly unpalatable. Unless, of course, they were ivy players. The life of the elite may work well for some, but for James, James was a boy who really craved freedom. And thus the day came when he finally mustered up the courage to run away into the big world beyond the walls. It broke his 
hard to leave his family pet and only friend Growly behind, but he had to make a break for the good life before he withered into little more than a husk of a human. James's struggle was a struggle to move up the pyramid of needs to a point where he could actually achieve some sense of self-actualization. And while he still has a long ways to go, obviously, he certainly moved up the rings when he escaped his penny prison to meet a young woman from another walk of life and forge a friendship that would last a lifetime. And of course, meeting Jesse would lead James to yet another life-changing encounter. An encounter with a talking cat thing whose backstory is perhaps the most tragic of the three. Jesse grew up in a mess of parentless poverty and broken dreams, and James was smothered into depression by the lifestyle of the elites. But Meowth's early days are perhaps the most depressing of all. Meowth's first memory is of arriving at Camp Pokeheart, in a basket, as an orphan with nothing but an empty stomach, desperate enough to attempt eating the camp's baseballs, a transgression for which he was thoroughly punished. Meowth was not only alone back then, but the people around him, they actually despised him. And thus, after one day catching a glimpse of a seemingly perfect world wherein people actually loved their Pokemon, he set out on an adventure to the so-called promised land with the dream of finding a place where he belonged. However, the Hollywood of the real world was a far cry from the Hollywood that he saw in the movies. Upon arrival, he was instantly vilified by the people there and was only able to stay above ground by stealing scraps of food and joining a street gang. And then, one day, he saw a beautiful ray of hope in the form of a charming female Meowth named Meowzy. He fell for her at first sight and fantasies of what could be ran through his head, only for her to turn up her nose and reject him as a filthy stray, explaining that she only rolled with humans. Wealthy humans, it would seem. Meowth was crushed, but he was not about to give up on the chance of earning the love of someone for the first time in his life. And thus he did what he thought he needed to do to earn Meowzy's love. He learned to walk and to talk like a human. He grinded, grinded, grinded some more, going through whatever pains were necessary to transform himself into a Meowth who could walk on two legs and speak like a human. Through sheer grit and determination, he achieved something virtually unprecedented in the world of Pokemon in order to claw his way out of the darkness of despair. And in the end, Meowzy simply belittled him as a half Pokemon, half human freak. He was devastated. But Meowth is someone who never gives up. He bounced back, and inspired by the first human word he ever learned, he blasted off to a new life at an organization at which those who don't belong, belong. At Team Rocket's training camp, Jesse, James, and Meowth, tragic but kindred spirits, would at last come together and unite to denounce the evils of truth and love. And yet, there was one more character on the card. Of course, I could not forget about the Mirror Coat King. Wobbuffet emerged as a late 4th addition to the trio in Tricks of the Trade and has remained front and center alongside the original three ever since. Wobbuffet's tale is pretty simple. It's a tale about being inherently weak but still doing your best to contribute something to the team. Originally under the ownership of a trainer named Benny, Wobbuffet was soon to switch hands when Benny decided to try and get rid of it in exchange for a stronger Pokemon. On. Unfortunately, nobody wanted a weak Pokemon like Wobbuffet who did not have any offensive techniques. And then, Jesse accidentally drops the Pokeball containing her Lickitung into a trade machine, probably for the better, unintentionally swapping it for Benny's Wobbuffet. Ever since, Wobbuffet would see Jesse as a mother figure and do its very best to contribute to the team and to her betterment. Just to name a few of Wobbuffet's contributions, Wobbuffet joined the Team Rocket motto in Tunnel Vision. He made a giant Claydol feel... something on account of his Mado cosplay in Claydol's Big and Tall. He bailed Jesse out by deflecting a Rhyfrior's attack in a fork in the road, a parting of the ways, and he was instrumental in helping Jesse win the Pokemon Showcase in a dancing debut. Like the trio, he is fairly incompetent, but he is also a team player who puts his best foot forward, even if that foot tends to end up in a goopy doo-doo most of the time. Regardless, he is a source of comic relief who lightens up any situation, and 
he is most certainly a loyal and lighthearted member of the team who serves as a buffer to the tragedy that is Team Rocket. So those are the fearsome four. But when all is said and done, what can we take away from the comedic tragedy that is Team Rocket? Jesse, James, Meowth, Wobbuffet. You could consider Ash Ketchum the main protagonist of the series, a very reasonable consideration. Or you could consider Team Rocket as the main protagonists of the series, as Takeshi Shudo appeared to view the group. But either way, it does not matter. Because at the end of the day, if you dig through the big wins, the big losses, the big struggles, the tragedy, and the comedy, and even considering the contrast by which Ash Ketchum does become increasingly more successful, whereas Team Rocket never really becomes much more successful, both parties are flip sides to a coin that embodies the core message of the Pokemon anime. A message that is captured in a single stanza from the song Viridian City which was eternalized on the To Be A Master CD that was released way, way back on June 29th, 1999. The stanza goes like this. We keep on trying and then we try some more to stay together and find a place worth fighting for. And that is exactly what the tragedy, the adventures, and the family unit of the Team Rocket story is all about. It's about not having a place worth fighting for and seeking to find it and finding not just a physical space but an unbreakable family worth fighting for. It is about staying together through failure after failure after failure after failure after failure after failure. And it is about trying, 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 and then trying some more. To break out of the roughs, to keep getting back up every time life punches you down, and to do it together with the people who truly matter to you. Team Rocket's story is a story about how powerful friendships trump circumstances, and about how even the undesirables and the failures in life can keep pushing forward and create their own promised land despite what anyone tells them. Jessie, the matriarch who protects her friends as much as she pushes them into uncomfortable situations they don't want to get into. James, the loyal friend with a soft side who never ever gives up on the team. Meowth, the understated anti-hero who will push through anything in an attempt to bend dreams into reality even if his attempts usually fail. Wabafet, the silly weakling who shows his quality by doing as much as he can, while shedding a beam of chuckles into even the darkest of days. These characters were all so pathetic, so lost, and so incapable on their own. But because they just kept pushing and trying to create something good for themselves, they found each other and the rest is history. They may be terrible at stealing Pokemon, but they are there for each other through thick and thin. And in recent years, we have even seen them achieve some successes through their fairly unique new ventures. And I can only wonder what they will try their hand at next. Well, this is Team Rocket. Their tragic, but in some sense triumphant backstories shaped who they are. And who are they? Alongside Ash Ketchum and Pikachu, they are the timeless main characters of the Pokemon anime who we have come to love, hate, and relate with. And I look forward to the years of adventures to come. But what about you? What do you think about the tragedy of Team Rocket? Can you relate to the broken dreams and the broken hearts? And are you going to keep on trying and then try some more? to stay together and find the place you're fighting for. I'm curious what you think, and as always, let's chat.